Marriage counselors, what are the most common mistakes couples make? I have provided couples counseling at different points in my career. Some of the common mistakes I will often see are expecting partners to be able to read their mind and anticipate needs and wants. Goes with the first one, lack of communication slash comfort with discussing difficult topics or one partner being uncomfortable with discussion a topic which leaves both partners feeling frustrated or dissatisfied. Blaming their partner for all issues in the relationship and not taking ownership of their own role in dysfunction slash issues. Not expressing gratitude towards your partner on a regular basis. Experiences and expressions of gratitude can have a really positive effect on psychological well-being as well as relational strength. Not giving intimacy in their relationship enough attention. This includes but is not limited to sex. Many relationships start with the hot and heavy phase, where intimacy can come naturally. As this phase diminishes many couples do not spend the time and energy to consider how to maintain a healthy level of intimacy, now that it doesn't just come naturally. Not listening. Most people listen to respond, and don't listen to hear. This is what I spend the most time teaching couples how to do. Wife has degree in marriage and family counseling. One of the bigger factors in a successful marriage are couples responding to repair attempts during argument slash conflict. Rescue attempts are often little jokes or olive branches to help overcome issues and arguments. Edit. People keep asking for an example. My wife didn't buy movie tickets in advance for date night this last Sunday and it was sold out. It sucked. She laughed and sheepishly said, we'll, at least we get to spend more time together staring longingly into each other's eyes. That was her rescue attempt. It works two ways though, I also have to respond positively to it, which I did. We did a lot of staring longingly into each other's eyes last Sunday. Keeping score. A partnership is a team, not a competition. Whether a person keeps score of everything they have done, or everything their partner has done, it is a death knell for the relationship. This is one of the most common causes of resentment in a relationship, and you see it often when people use absolute terms to describe themselves or their partners. I point e, I always, she never. Remembering that each person has his slash her own needs, abilities, skills, and boundaries is essential to a healthy couple. Expecting that because your significant other knows you better than others and is around you most, that they are aware of all of your thoughts and feelings. Your partner is not psychic, and no matter how often they are around you, or how well they know you, they cannot pick up on every nuance to determine how you are feeling and how they should respond. That is called emotional babysitting, and it cascades into a host of problems and unnecessary hurt. I went to 5 sessions with my wife during a tough period. The best things we learned from that is. Never lash the other with past misbehaviors when trying to resolve a current issue. We have been married 17 years so there is limitless crap we can pull out of our history together to highlight past wrongs and that just derails what could be a quick resolution. When one half says I'm not happy about X, do not respond with OK, but I'm unhappy with Y. Fix X get settled. Then bring up why, if you still need to. Therapist here, have served couples. Number one problem I see, is overactive threat response creating anger and rigidity. People don't stop to turn down their defense mode, and lose sight of love, because all their energy is going towards being right or controlling the outcome. Of course that control, comes from a place of fear, but fear and vulnerability feels too dangerous, so it typically gets expressed as anger frustration, or rigidity. Surrender to not having control, accept what's in front of you, and cultivate compassion. Please. Because you're rigid couples who just can't prioritize empathizing with each other over your fear response are driving me nuts. Colon close bracket. Divorce lawyer here. Talk. About. Money. Talk. About. Sex. If you're marrying someone with a shitty credit score, you should know how and why they ended up with it, lest you find yourself in their shoes very quickly. A credit score can cost thousands, and take YEARS to rebuild. Know if they have any tax liens or liability. Are they paying child support, and do they have any kind of garnishment? Who is going to be responsible for managing the finances? How many credit cards does the other person have, and what are their balances? I've seen money kill a lot of marriages. 
Another one a lot of people don't think of is actually talking about sex, not just having it. Do you enjoy the sex you have? Would you like to have more of it? Less? Would you like to see it change? Do you or the other person have any weird kinks? Just have the talk. Different sexual wavelengths can be difficult to reconcile. Expecting one person to be everything for them. You need friends, cowhawkers, a support system, and hobbies. Keeping secrets or lies. Failure to communicate effectively, this can be taught. Getting married because they wanted a wedding, not because they wanted to be married. As soon as couple stops, being on the same team, fighting all the bullshit of life together, things fall apart. Get on the same team. Get behind each other's goals. If you're not on the same team, you're just going to wind up annoying the fuck out of each other. All that bullshit of life is going to be beating you down, and your life partner is just going to be part of it instead of a refuge. Not a therapist, but I read an article once that I found very useful. I can't remember he exact terms but basically, how you react when your partner reaches out with small probes for connection. It's not necessarily big hobbies or interests, but little things throughout every day that are sort of unconscious reaches for positive feedback from your partner. For example, I see a pretty bird outside, and I say omg, come look at this cool bird. Or hey check out this song I heard that I really like. If my partner passively or blatantly rejects that, it feels bad, even if I don't always fully recognize that in the moment. Over time, those micro rejections as I call them start to build up, and it's why people start to feel like someone doesn't really care about them. On the flip 8, even just a little bit of positive attention and sharing in a moment makes you feel so good, again even if you don't realize it. Getting up and looking at the bird is saying, this is important to you in this moment, so it's important to me. It's basically like those other small shared experiences that build up a joint life, and if you start to neglect your partner in those small ways, you can grow distant. I try really hard now to never ignore or reject my partner's small reaches. I often don't care about the Instagram meme he wants to show me, or the latest NBA news, but I'll listen or look and laugh, because I want him to feel loved and appreciated. I work with couples and their relationships a lot, in my line of work, and do some forms of counseling though it is not my job or training. But one of the common threads I see running in the midst of relationships slash marriages that fall apart is a kind of selfishness. People that don't quite realize that marriage works best when you are both acting in the other's best interest and seeking their happiness more than your own. It crops up a lot, but not exclusively, in sex slash intimacy, if your primary concern in sex is you, you are not going to build any kind of bond or intimate connection, and nor is it going to be much fun for your partner. Marriage is a lot about sacrifice and the couples I see thriving are the ones who are each willing to make sacrifices for the other and for their family. Couples who get married thinking that the coming decades of marriage are going to be exactly like the dating or the honeymoon phase when they face major challenges or speed bumps in their life together have a real hard time dealing with it, but I thought I was supposed to be happy. Currently a student in a clinical psychology doctorate program focusing in marriage and family. If you aren't already familiar with it, I would recommend taking a look at John Gottman's work on romantic relationships. He is one of the best known researchers on this topic. Perhaps his most famous work is The Four Horsemen. In a 30 minute interview, Gottman was able to accurately predict which couples were divorce based on their interactions with each other, particularly when those interactions included criticism, contempt, defensiveness, stonewalling, Research from the Gottman Institute has expanded on this to provide a pretty comprehensive list of factors that lead to couple conflict and divorce. Gottman also addresses solutions to these issues, which primarily exist within his form of couples therapy. Take this all with a grain of salt. This is one perspective on relationships, but it tends to be a pretty robust and well-researched one, and it happens to be the one I'm the most familiar with. My personal understanding on the issue is that problems arise from a lack of humility and the challenge of getting out of deeply ingrained patterns slash cycles of conflict, which generally requires both partners to accept fault and extend grace 